What's up, Internet? With all the new technology that's coming stock from the factory in cars, the source unit radio is becoming harder and harder to replace. So if we want to add aftermarket amplifiers to a system, we're forced to interface with that stock factory radio. Now, many cars are also coming with a stock amplifier that has channels that are broken up into all sorts of different frequency ranges. For this becoming more and more of a common thing, it's not as easy for us to add an aftermarket amplifier anymore by just adding a simple line output converter. Luckily though, many car audio companies are starting to make aftermarket interface devices that allow us to easily grab that signal, correct it, and then send it to aftermarket amplifiers. Now, how do these devices work? I don't know about you guys, but I'm a visual person and I wanna see exactly what these devices do to the factory signal in order to improve it. In order to better show what these aftermarket devices do to the OEM signal, I decided to build the Car Audio Fabrication Integration Test Center. The test center is gonna feature a stock radio and a stock amplifier so that I can show you guys in future videos how these aftermarket interface devices work. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I built it. So let's get started. To start the OEM test center, I'm going to build the frame that will hold the radio, amplifier, and everything for the wiring. For this project, I'm using the Monsoon factory audio system out of a Pontiac Grand Prix. This will be a great system to use for showing how to integrate with a complicated OEM system because this amplifier features crossover channels. What this means is it has a channel for the tweeters that only sends high frequencies, a channel for the mids that only sends mid-range frequencies, and a subwoofer channel that sends low frequency information. If you were to just try and tap into any of these lines with a line output converter, you would not be getting the full frequency spectrum, so I'll be able to show summing devices and other units for solving this kind of issue. More on this later. After sketching out the locations of everything and the overall shape, I make an angled cut on the bottom so that the face of this will sit at an angle. As always, I rough cut everything using a jigsaw as I will use templates and the router with a flush trim bit in order to make sure that my final cuts on everything are perfect. I apply double-sided template tape to a Mobile Solution Smart Template to stick it to the board to copy the outer profile shape. For the radio hole, I'm using the Fakuda square to cut out a perfect rectangle. Finally, I have some banana plug binding posts that I'm installing, so I'll be using the wall plate cover that came with those to make a perfect fitting hole. I of course check everything for fitment before I proceed. To give this panel some more visual appeal, I use a chamfer bit on all of the holes and the outside edge to give it a finished look. Now I forgot that I also wanted to add a hole for the wire to come through for the amplifier, so I bust out the flush trim bit again and make this nice oval hole. I then chamfer it as well. In the meantime, I've created a baseboard using similar techniques. This board will support the angled vertical panel. I attach the two by applying wood glue and then using a brad nailer to secure the two together. Off camera, I also created two support walls with oval holes that will allow me to easily pick up this whole unit. Once everything is glued and has dried, it's time for paint. I start the painting process with applying some black primer. MDF can really suck up the paint, so I have to apply multiple layers. Next I apply a texture paint that I found online. This paint gives the structure a much more finished look. After allowing time for the paint to dry, it's time to assemble all of the components. I begin with mounting the banana plug binding post outlets. These are made for home audio, but will work great for this. Keep in mind, a list to all the tools and materials used in this video is down in the video description and linked here on screen. Next, I have to mount the amplifier. For this, I'm using threaded wooden inserts. This adds a metal thread to the wood, so if I need to take the amplifier on and off, I can do so many times without compromising a hole that is drilled into the wood. To apply the radio, I simply applied screws from the back side of the panel. Now it's time to connect all of my wiring. I used a wire schematic I found online to connect all of the important wires that attach the stock amplifier to the stock radio. For this, I used nine conductor wire. Link is down in the video description. I also used the same nine conductor wire for all of the amplifier outputs that will run to the banana plug binding post. You'll see this later. In the meantime, I'm screwing down some terminal strips. I will use these for a direct connection to my 12 volt power supply to power the radio, amplifier, 
and also to power some of the binding posts that I have on the front so that I can easily connect 12 volt power for whatever aftermarket device I want to test. For the power connections, I make twisted cable using red and black primary wire and a drill. I showed how to do this in a previous video. For the sake of keeping things tidy on the back side of the panel, I use these plastic wire restraints. To connect the wires to the binding posts, I unscrew them and tighten them upon a stripped end of wire. I also do this for all the amplifier output wires. These are the wires that would normally run to all the different speakers, but I'm running them to the binding post so that I can easily grab that signal from the front side of the panel and plug it in to an aftermarket unit. Now that everything is wired to where it needs to be, all I have to do is a little bit more tidying up of the wires, and then I can move on to powering everything up. For power, I'm using a 12 volt power supply. Now let's fire everything up. Someone over on Instagram asked how I could use this radio without having the data lead. For this factory radio and many others, there's usually a hack to get them to work. In this case, if I press the 5 button, the forward arrow, and the power button at the same time, it will start right up. So let's take a look at how I can use this to show the value of various aftermarket devices. Here I have an RTA which shows output across the human hearing spectrum of frequencies. Right now, I am connected directly to the subwoofer output from the stock amplifier. You can see that the output is from about 40 Hz to 100 Hz and that it drops off on each side. For the front speaker signal, we have no subwoofer base and many peaks and valleys. For the tweeter, we actually have a nice signal, but it's crossed at about 6.3k. Again, these are all measurements of the stock amplifier. If we were to tap into just one of these signals to add an aftermarket full range amplifier, we'd be missing information to send to our speakers. We'd either be lacking in bass, mids, or highs. What I can do though, is I can connect these stock amplifier outputs to a device like the Audio Control LC7i, which is used for signal summing, and now I not only have a low level RCA output to send to an aftermarket amplifier, I also have a fully summed signal that incorporates all the frequencies I can send to an aftermarket full range amplifier. Now there are still some peaks and valleys, so ideally we would also want to incorporate an aftermarket equalizer into the system in order to tune those away. So there you have it, our first look at an example on how I'll be able to use the test center to show you guys how these different devices like DSPs, signal summing devices, line output converters, how they all work. If you're looking forward to me testing more of these devices in the future, please slam that like button. Also, drop me a comment down below and let me know what devices you guys would like to see tested on this. Now, the whole reason I was able to build this test center is because of the support from the guys over on my Patreon page. These guys make small donations per video, which allows me to have a budget to make things like the integration test center and to cover all the other different costs of making these videos. A special thanks goes out to Emmanuel, Ali, EJ, Rory, Eddie, Truman, and Jerry, along with the rest to the Patreon support team. If you would like to join those guys in the support of making these videos, please visit patreon.com slash car audio fabrication. Thank you again for watching this video.